Now we're going to look at the second part of binary division, and this is uh, looking at a number that the solution is not a whole number. So we'll take um, 7, which is a number here, and we'll look at that divided by 39. Okay, so 39 divided by 7. So as discussed previously, uh, we need to convert these two decimal numbers into their binary equivalent. So I'll take the 39 and I start from the right hand side, 1 double to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 and I don't go up to 64 because 64 obviously will not go into 39. So 32 will go into 39 and that will give us a remainder of 7. Uh, 16 won't go into 7, 8 won't go into 7, but 4 will go into, years, into 7, which gives us a remainder of 3, and 2 will go in, giving us a remainder of 1, 1 will go into 1, giving us a remainder of 0. So that therefore is the binary equivalent of 39, and I want to work out the binary equivalent of 7, so obviously 32 16 and 8 all will not go into 7, but 4, 2 and 1 make up the equivalent of 7. The three zeros at the left hand side of that number are insignificant and therefore those, or as we can see there, they're my two uh, binary uh, equivalents of the decimal sequence. So if I put them in the step 2, if I put them into the same division sequence, so 1, 1, 1, which is the equivalent to 7, with 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now I start my process, so I basically look there, the 7 go into 1, because that's only one bit. No, it doesn't, so I place a 0 above there. I take two bits now, and that is the decimal equivalent of 2. Does 7 go into 2? No, it doesn't. I take three bits now, and that is the equivalent of four. So does seven go into four? No, it doesn't. And then I take three, uh, sorry, the four bits now, which is the decimal equivalent of nine. So does seven go into nine? Yes, it does. And this starts the ball rolling for the third process. So we know that, that binary division is shift and subtract, and that uh, uh, computers aren't able to subtract. So therefore we have to turn the second number into its complement. So this is where this process changes. So normally it would be 1 times that. So 1 times 7 obviously equals 7. But we can't write 7, we have to write its complement. And to work out its complement we have to perform 1's complement followed by 2's complement on that number. So performing 1's complement on this number is changing all the bits, so flipping them all around. Now that gives you 0, 0, 0. If we add 1 to that number, which is the 2's complement part, 1 plus 0 equals 1, 0, 0. And we always have to keep in a 3-bit number. We can't ignore any of the insignificant bits there. So that is our um, complement of 7. So if I place a little line down there, because I've used 4 bits, we have to work in the confines of the 4 bits that we've used. I'll place my 1 there. And I'll put my 0 and 0. And basically all I'm doing is I'm transferring that number to there. Now, what I'm able to do is now I can add these together. So 1 plus 1 equals 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1. 0 plus 0 equals 0. Now, because my um, second number here is only 3 bits, I will ignore anything outside of here. So I won't actually drag down that one there. I only work within the confines of those three bits there. My next step is step four. So I continue this process and the process is continued until either I have no more uh, columns which I can use um, and my remainder cannot be um, uh, subtracted any further. So at the moment I've got this number here which has a decimal equivalent of 2 and I basically continue the process. Will the 7 go into 2? No it doesn't so I need a bit of help. So I grab this one here and I drag it down. So that has the decimal equivalent of 5. So does 7 go into 5? No it doesn't. So a 0 will go up the top here. 
and I have to drag down another number there. Okay, so I now have the binary equivalent of 11. So does 7 go into 11? Yes, it does. So I place a 1 there. Continue this same process. 1 times that. So 1 times 7 obviously equals 7, but I can't have 7 there. I need to find out it's 1s by 2s complement, which gives me this number here. So I start from the right, 1, 0, 0. I can add them together, so 1 and 1 equals 0, carry a 1. 1 and 1 equals a 0, carry a 1. Because this is only a 3-bit number, I need to disregard anything else that is there. Now, step 5, where it is different here. I cannot grab any more numbers down. I can't grab any extra help. And this is what I'm left with. So this then forms part of my remainder. This is the whole number of my solution. So therefore, my answer is 101 one with a remainder of this number here on top of that number there on top of the 7. And in decimal terms, that would be equal to 5 remainder 4 sevenths.